You're watching Cartel TV and I'm Simone. Those of you who follow our channel will know that we, the Cartel TV team, have loved the new Volvos. I mean, forget the old Volvo stigmas of the past, the new ones have been great and we've reviewed a ton of them. For example, the XC40 is one of our favourite small SUVs and that's in a very tough competition. We also love the XC90 when it appeared, as well as the classy S90. However, the S60 has a bit of a tougher job. It's in a very particular niche of compact executive sedans. This means that it's not an SUV, so it's not sold like hotcakes. It's compact, but not a wagon, so it rules out those people who need larger boots. It's executive, which means it needs to be reasonably plush and packed with some cool features and materials, and it has to bring all that for a relatively affordable price. I say relatively because it's not cheap, but it's also not as expensive as executive cars, which are one size bigger. Now, this kind of a narrow and exclusive playing field means that it has some very tough competition to deal with. Mostly from Europe, well, mostly from Germany. And mostly from three of the most beloved car manufacturers, Audi, BMW and Mercedes. Basically, these cars are bought by people who want exactly this kind of vehicle. They have enough money to buy them, they don't need a bigger car, they like to press the pedal now and then, and they don't want an SUV. Still, just like the C-Class A4 and 3 Series from the German Trio, the S60 still has a strong following, mainly because for years, it ticked all of the before-mentioned boxes. So today, I have the latest version of the Volvo S60 in the R design trim, and it's meant to be a huge leap up from the previous model. So after that incredibly long-winded introduction, let's get to the review. In terms of design, it's certainly better than the previous generation. The latest S60 is a wonderful mixture of elegance, class, Scandinavian minimalism, awesome materials and well-proportioned lines. Just look at the damn thing. There are three trim levels, but Volvo is a bit unique in that respect as well. First you have Momentum, that's the base trim. It's pretty feature-packed as is, so not many people will have to go beyond that. For those who want more, they can go in two directions. They can either opt for more plush and style and go with inscription, or more sportiness and go with our design. The one I have here is the sporty one. It is lower than the other models and it sports its own 19 inch wheels and gloss black exterior details to spice up the grills. But all of those are just icings on the beautiful cake that this vehicle's shape is. It's clean, classy and minimalistic with an elegant grille, Thor's hammer headlights, subtle yet effective bulges and just a bit of sharpness in all the right places. Maybe this small elevated spoiler on the boot lid is a good example of what can be done with seemingly small details. The spoiler is tiny but it adds a lot to the side silhouette and really makes the car look sportier and more elegant at the same time. There are three powering options and there's no diesel. The T5R design that I have here comes with a 2 litre 4 pot with a turbo that produces 192 kilowatts of power and 400 newton metres of torque. Now those are Australian numbers, since our design here stands for the Polestar tampered version of the T5 that gets just 5 kilowatts more but also 50 newton metres over the standard T5. Don't be put off by the engine size. Even the largest standard Volvo models now come only with a two litre engine, either with turbocharging alone, or turbo and a supercharger together, or in a hybrid pack, giving a whole range of different power and efficiency levels from one engine size. This particular one reaches 106.4 seconds, tops out at 240 kilometers per hour, and all that while officially consuming 7.3 liters per 100 kilometers. We never managed to get to that number during our test, but we still got pretty good figures for a petrol car with 1,767 kilograms of weight. The other T5 version is actually very similar to this one. It has 187 kilowatts of power and 350 newton meters of torque. However, the best one is T8, which is a performance-oriented hybrid with a 2.0-litre turbocharged and supercharged engine, which gives 246 kilowatts of power and an electric motor with 65 kilowatts more. It sprints to 100 in 4.3 seconds and officially consumes 2 litres per 100 kilometres, presumably with a lot of help from the electric motor. So, what's it like to drive? Well, let's just say I'd love to try the T8 hybrid because the T5 is just so good, I can only imagine the T8 would be a beast. 187 kilowatts is not racing material, but it's more than enough for confident acceleration in all regimes. With 400 newton meters pretty low in the rev range, the power is used efficiently and you never seem to have to wait for it for a long time. Changing driving modes really affects how this car feels. 
it changes the engine response, shift points and times for the gearbox that seems to stiffen up the ride and also adjusts the steering feel that goes from very light in comfort mode to comfortably heavy in sport. I'd prefer the heavier setups across all modes, but that's just me. I don't really like light steering wheels. But in saying that, most people will welcome the versatility that these driving modes bring. The engine is paired with an 8-speed Geartronic automatic and that's the only option regardless of the trim level. That's okay, because the gearbox is awesome. It's smooth, reasonably fast and its shift points are spot on. It only happened a few times where it was a bit indecisive about which gear to choose, but even in those moments, I was still comfortable. The r design version is also lower and it has stiffer suspension. Hearing this may scare off some buyers who drive on some of our worst roads, but I have to say that it's not that bad. Still, if you want maximum comfort, I wouldn't choose the r design version. The car is all-wheel drive and that's the only version that we get here in Australia. Some other markets get a front-wheel drive version as well, but I don't think many people here will miss that. It hugs the road really well and inspires confidence. However, despite all this praise sung, I still have to say that the S60 with this engine, although fun to drive, still lags a little bit behind the sportier offerings from its German competitors. I know the T8 would be a lot sportier and I hope we'll get that one to test soon. Some other markets also get T6, which is both turbo and supercharged, but lacks the electric motor. It offers more push than this one and it definitely fills the space between the T5 and T8. However, for most people, this kind of car won't be used to cut curves. And based on that, this T5 will actually give more performance than most people will ever need. And once again, it really is fun to drive. The latest design of the inside is a huge improvement for the entire Volvo range. The successful design ideas of the XC90 have been used throughout the range, and even the smaller and cheaper S60 really reminds me of the flagship offering. The R design comes with contour seats and its own unique trim, including metal mesh decor inlays and charcoal headlining. As you'd expect, every trim level has a different style, and I know the inscription gets driftwood decor inlays as standard. However, it's not all about the looks. You also need space for stuff, and in a compact car, that's not always easy. The S60 has a big central console with two cup holders and some space for smaller items, as well as a bin under the armrest, glove box, and door pockets with bottle holders. I have to say that the door pockets aren't very deep, and in the rear, they're also a bit small. But overall, the fit and finish are awesome, and the materials look and feel premium. The 9-inch screen is upright and well-placed, and it also reacts to voice commands. It also comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and it sits between these stylish air vents. The infotainment system is just awesome. It's fast and responsive, and the interface follows that elegant theme. And because of its design and software, I guess, it's one of the few infotainment systems where you can access other features and apps whilst CarPlay remains open. But something which may take a little getting used to is the fact that there's just one physical button on the screen and it's a home button. And you do have volume control buttons underneath. Sure, you can control some things from the steering wheel, but for many things, including the air conditioning, you have to use the touch screen. And for that, you need to look at it. That is, unless you want to use voice control for this. Still, I suppose that after getting used to it after a few weeks, that's not really much of a problem. Also, it's a small price for us having the minimalistic, clean design that we kind of expect to see in our tech now anyway. There is lots of space in the back for this class, although I have to say that taller passengers will have their knees a little bit high up. Legroom is awesome, maybe even class leading, and headroom is pretty good as well. Now, the middle seat in the rear isn't so great, both in terms of width and legroom, mainly due to this massive tunnel and also due to the large rear section of the central console. But the good thing about this baby is it also has a standard Australian plug outlet. It is usable, but three adults in the back are not going to be happy and you should give the middle seat to your least favourite. There are 442 litres of boot space, which is a bit smaller than the boots of all of the mentioned competitors. However, the opening is very nice. It's wide, so even larger items can be placed with relative ease. The only issue is this low lip, but that's a standard feature on pretty much all sedans, so I don't mind it. I also have to point out the Bowers and Wilkins sound system that comes with this car. It's an optional feature, and it's not cheap. It comes with the optional premium pack that also adds panoramic sunroof and rear window sun curtain. It also adds a full $5,000 to the price. Now, we all know how much I love panoramic roofs but the sound system is definitely the star of the premium pack. It's better than sound systems in some much more expensive cars. 
This is a Volvo, so safety is a big plus. Just some of the features are pedestrian vehicle, large animals and cyclist detection, intersection collision and oncoming mitigation with brake support, adaptive cruise control, pilot assist, driver alert, lane keeping aid, oncoming lane mitigation, blind spot information, cross traffic alert, front and rear collision warning with mitigation support, runoff road mitigation, hill start assist, hill descent control, park assist front and rear, rear parking camera, 360 camera, emergency brake assist, front airbags, side impact protection system with airbags in front seats, inflatable curtains and whiplash protection system and more. It's a Volvo, it's safe. The R-Design S60 with this engine costs $64,990, but this particular car adds the mentioned premium pack and special paint for the total of $71,490. That's not cheap, but for what it gives, it's more than worth it. It looks amazing. The interior is spacious, beautiful, and of very high quality. It's very safe, and the powertrain is great. Volvo seems to be doing so many things well these days. I think it's closing in on its German competition. It's not all there yet in all segments of the market, but if you're looking for a sporty, compact executive car, then the S60 is as viable a choice as any of the German ones. Thanks for watching Cartel TV. Now, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and leave us a comment below about what you like about the S60 or what you don't like. And I'll be picking my favorite comment about the car and giving away a free signed T-shirt and winners to be announced on our Facebook page. See you soon.